Hey there folks and welcome to another episode of the Amazing Brick Network. My name is Tori Favreau. Let's just jump straight into the news, shall we? They've released uh, Star Wars Yoda's lightsaber. It looks fantastic. It is going to be a giveaway, I believe, uh, when you do purchase stuff through the Lego store. It won't be available uh, for a regular retail purchase. In interesting news, Lego is working to make its packaging sustainable by 2025. And it's those plastic bags that you do get inside the actual uh, Lego sets. They're looking at doing away from the plastic, which I think is fantastic. The bags are useless, let's face it. We rip them open. Yeah, it's good to be able to see the bricks inside. Of it. But to be honest, you can't do anything with them once they're ripped open and um, they just go into landfill. So I think this is fantastic that they are going to invest in this. It certainly makes it worthwhile. And I totally do think it's very responsible of the Lego group to uh, get on top of this important message. We do have a new group in the Brick Network, so uh, if you do want to look up amazing Lego vehicles, you can join the fun there, and of course, you can be a part of it all. So please give that a look at. Lucas, thank you for sending this through. This is the King Kahuka Palace, and it looks fantastic. Make sure you do support this uh, build on Lego Ideas. I'm absolutely loving it. Lucas should be sending us through some more stuff about this particular build. I love the tribes, people. I do think it looks absolutely beautiful. Stunning build, mate, and the way it's all holding together, just it looks like it's got a lot of playability. I'm extremely excited to see what happens in the future with this particular build. Well done, mate. I am just such a fan. And every little detail that you can think of is certainly there. So bravo indeed. I do love this. And I do have some of those minifigures myself. They're a lot of fun. They're certainly hard to get now. So uh, it's good to see them in action here. Dan put this through. He, this has been on the show before, but he has modified the uh, the fort. And I do think it looks absolutely amazing. It's actually inspiring. But the way the cliffs work up from the water there... You've packed a lot of detail in, mate, and I do absolutely love it. Every every time you do these builds, they inspire me. I love the amount of minifigures that you're using there. It just looks like a genuine good time for everyone. So, well done. Absolute perfect job. I can't wait to see what you do next. Now, Stephen shared this. He picked this up. It's a German catalogue, and obviously I can't read a single part of it. But um, it is interesting to see these old pirate catalogues. They do look like a lot of fun, the old-fashioned presentation it's just good to go on that trip down memory lane and i do appreciate you sharing this with the amazing lego pirate group thank you so very much mate the final picture from here just showing some of the range from back in the day this is when you know they had the lego land uh branding on them um and of course they came up with some of them saying system on them as well <laughs> Peter Wims made us a uh, McDonald's mock for it to look at. I love the amount of detail in this. Um, I really appreciate it, Peters. It looks so good. Now, check out all the detail there. You've got the, even got the figures inside. That's one thing I noticed with the current, or the modular diner. I think it's a little bit weak in terms of uh, how many mini figures are in there. It's such a beautiful set. It should have had figures in here like this one does. You know, actually enjoying the wonderful Lego food that's being provided for them. You fill this up beautifully with detail, Peters. I love the fact that you've done your own custom little stickers for it. It does look really good. This is a testament to creativity. I um, would have liked to have seen some of those bricks turned around that we could have seen a little bit more brick detail. However, I am more than aware that this is more reminiscent of what you would expect from a modern McDonald's as opposed to what I necessarily want to see. There is the drive-through there. Absolutely beautiful. And the custom Ronald McDonald down the bottom does look pretty cool. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, you could expand this out a little bit to include a cooking area. And here it is fitting into your wonderful city. It absolutely works a treat and uh, it looks like so much fun. I would like to see more builds from you in the future. Andy did this um, double bridge battle with the extended center. Now this was one of the Spider-Man sets. I used to own this set. It is a lot of fun. You've done a great job at expanding this all out. It's certainly stunning. Thank you, mate. This was a build from Tobias T, Mike's Bikes. Now, this thing is jammed full of detail. 
I am loving the fact that a lot of you are getting really creative with what you're doing with regards to your modular buildings. You're expanding upon them and it does give us a juxtaposition from your standard modular sets being clipped together, which I'm too guilty of. Simply don't have enough bricks at the moment to be doing my own mocks. But uh, this is jam packed, full of detail. There's lots to see and do here. And I love just the little detail, like in the kitchen, you've got the chicken cooking. I'm not sure if it's what it's cooking on though, my friend. Uh, I wonder if uh, maybe a frying pan or something underneath it should be there, but it doesn't matter. Everyone loves a good drumstick. And of course, a tasty beverage just waiting to uh, help wash it all down. Now we've got some more detail from the kitchen area here. Maybe that's a, a, a waiter going out. I'm not entirely sure, but I just love the photography. The fact you got in there, you did a great job. I might say your name wrong, but Critagia, seven years old. Um, I love this little build. Fantastic. There's a lot of nice little techniques being used here. Great use of the bricks. Not everyone has, you know, a million white or whatever color bricks. And I do adore it when I see people doing builds with the multicolor bricks. Because at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. Just the sheer creativity. I adore it. Please keep building. Congratulations on a wonderful build. Thank you. <laughs> Gab, thank you for sending this through. This is brilliant. The White Crow Castle, it's been submitted through to LEGO Ideas. I love the jaunty little way it's put together. There's some irregular angles being used here. I do think it's extremely clever. And look at the White Crow. It's just wonderful. Brick-built crow. It's reminiscent of some of the things you'd see like on the Arkham sets, where you do have a brick-built figure on a parapet on, a, on an edge there, like a gargoyle. There we go. That's just another side view of it. I, I just love how it is all put together. It's a beautiful, pristine build with a moat. It looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to see if it did pull apart. You've got your drawbridge there. I love the horses. I've got tons of those horses. They're so cool. And I'm so glad to see them in this set. It would be wonderful just for us little castle fans to see if this would be made into a regular set. Well done. The blacksmith there forging weapons for battle. A lot of fun just in every little corner, nook and cranny of this set. You've thought of everything and I think that all of our viewers would love to see more from you. Please comment below if you've got any other questions or features or details that you would like to see. And of course, hit subscribe and ring the bell to make sure that you don't miss out on another episode of the Amazing Brick Network. And here we go. We've got some more photos here from uh, Marson, I do believe. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so very much for putting these into the show, my friend. You're a constant contributor. I do love it. And I can't wait to see what you do next. This village is just superb. And I love the fact that even though I can tell it's on a table, the way the, the grain of the table falls does allow us to believe that this will be part of a village with maybe, you know, wooden boards down because they did do that sometimes in place of roads. They do that so as the carriages and things would have traction and wouldn't slip through the mud. So it works very naturally, very effectively, and I'm just adoring what you're doing. I'm loving, you know, the, the different hairstyles that you're using and the different ways that you're using texture to help build up that story of your city, um, albeit a village. And even the, 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 I love the minifigures. They just bring me so much joy. All their little faces and the way that you've created a story through the use of minifigures. It's very, very well done. I love the, what you've done on the roof there, the window work. And of course, uh, it is all coming together very, very nicely. So this is a credit to what you can do, guys. Those minifigures do tell so many stories and they're an absolute joy to watch. So uh, I get a lot of pleasure in it, absolutely. Thank you so much for sending these through. Michael, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for sending this through. Mike sent through a couple of things for this episode and I do appreciate it. That haunted house is on my bucket list. I really regret not getting it when it came out. I am thinking of building it from parts. Love it. Bartholomew, thank you for sending through your photos. They're fantastic. You've got this little graveyard sequence going on. You've got the bodies in the back of the cart there. It's absolutely awesome. And I do love just all the little detail you've put in. This would certainly fit in very nicely. I think that's Jack from uh, the haunted side or hidden side, I should say. Um, 
I just I do love what you're doing there. I think it looks beautiful. Once again, jam packed, filled with detail. You guys do us proud every single time you put something out. This is a beautiful looking area that you've created. I think you know with a little bit more uh, you know uh, tiles maybe some weird angles we could make that area just a little bit creepier but i adore it and i think you've done such a brilliant job and i cannot wait to see more and that zombie guy there in the black with the skull creepy well done i love it least did a couple of uh little sets here like little dioramas i love them lisa thank you so much they just look cool and who doesn't want to ride on the back of an alligator i'll tell you right now well, this big Yeti wants to. It's as though these little minifigure guys walked around the corner. All of a sudden, he's like, whoa, I'm in the wrong area. Keep keep putting your stuff through to the horror group. Guys, I love what you're doing. It is utterly awesome. Thank you. A short video from Michael. I love what he's doing here. He's building the Octane uh, train there. But in the meantime, we've got stuff whizzing through. It's awesome. Caleb, Caleb was featured a couple of shows ago. He's built this tanker here. I love what you're doing, mate. It looks phenomenal. You've got such a clean building technique. Uh, utterly flawless. I really appreciate everything you do. Matthias built this uh, Moderus Gamma Tram. It looks awesome, and you've done such a beautiful job. Once again, it does remind me of the trams that we use in my, my capital city of Melbourne, but it is just a beautiful piece of work, mate. You continue to inspire me with what you do. Dwayne, thank you for doing this. This was a little bit of a mock to the rear of the Hogwarts Express. I do think it's very effective the way you've done it. It adds a little bit more detail, I think, as required with that build because it is a little bit sparse in the rear part, especially in the older versions of it. So what you've done here, I think the builders might be able to drag their heads around, make some changes to their existing sets. And just a oh, good idea using the Technic pin too. So that will hold on nicely and all things said and done. I love it. Thank you so much. Now, this was Mark's just little setup here, the way he's got it all displayed. And I, I just love it. It's very effective and he's built up the tracks in order to s display the trains a bit better here. And I do think it's a testament to what you can do with limited space. It's... Uh, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's very plain. Obviously, there's nothing around it, but you would be looking at this and um, the extended carriage system that he's built. It looks utterly wonderful. I'm extremely grateful. Thank you. Okay, so Dixon Kwan put this together, and this is one of the Japanese trains that he's made. I'm a massive fan of this, so you had the real train up in the corner there. But this is how he's built it digitally. Now, don't forget, guys, If you, I do personally consider digital builds to be just as valid as brick builds and sometimes they're even harder to do so thank you so much dixon i want to see more of this mate godzilla now there you go this has uh been submitted through to uh lego ideas this is a beautiful set i love me some godzilla you can't go wrong with a massive atomic nuclear lizard trashing everything and i really really do like the way that you have uh put this against photos i do give think it gives a sense of fun and scope and guys if you're paying attention there they've even put reflections from the background into the foreground so whoever's photoshopping these out of the two of you i think this is awesome it looks really cool it's convincing that godzilla is in the city and ready to do his thing and i really appreciate you sending it through it's just such a beautiful job. Look at the buildings being destroyed. Godzilla making his way to the Golden Gate Bridge. Alcatraz in the foreground there. It's just a cool little build. And we're going to give this a bit more attention because I do love the way it's been photoshopped and the fact that we've got all these scenes of carnage and destruction as Lego Godzilla makes his way through. It's, if you've seen some of the earlier Godzilla movies, or initially they were Japanese movies and they were literally a guy in a rubber suit standing around models of buildings back in the day. It was a beautiful little way to trick the viewer that there was a lot more going on than what we could see at the current time. Extremely well done. But this sense of scope, all the features, this is really thought out and then some. And I do think that this would be a very solid set um, that you certainly could play with. Richard Tafoy asked everyone, if how do you store your minifigures and to please post pics? Stanley offered us this... Uh, 
picture just of shelving. Stanley, you should be joining the classic amazing Lego space group. They've got some beautiful stuff up there I'd love to see. But this is fantastic, all those figures. Well done. Very, very cool. Jason Clark showed us these little individual cases. I've got about 2,000 figures. I don't know if I'd have enough, enough of these cases, my friend. Well done. Thanks for sharing. Everyone, this show is not at all possible without you guys. It's a testament to your building skills. It just shows the really good sense of fun that everyone has with their Lego. And it's an absolute privilege that every single week I get to bring this to you. Now, don't forget, please subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll, together we'll just build this up and build it and build it and make it the powerhouse that it deserves to be. Thank you. Take care. Bye.